Welcome to Reality Theory, episode 12, and this is called Rachel Maddow, Max Blumenthal, and their troublesome mentors. Now, y'all might be familiar with this Maddow Max beef that's going on the internet. Your boy Mad Max pulled up on Rachel Maddow at TrueCon, which was sponsored by Lockheed Martin, which is a big uh, weapons developer. They sponsor a lot of politicians. They profit off war. So you know what I mean? So Rachel Maddow was at this conference with Lockheed Martin, also sponsored by Peter Till, who's another right wing Trump supporter. But she's here uh, under the guise of like a kind of pro progressive, diverse, new military industrial complex in which we have transgender generals and uh you know women killing people like men do you know and and, and people of color uh as generals organizing drone strikes on other people of color so that's their kind of new woke uh military war complex theory and she spoke at this and your boy mad max pulled up pulled up on Rachel Maddow with some good questions and I'm actually suspicious of both of them which I'll get into but I think what I thought what mad max did was great Let's go, Max B. Pull up. Pull up on Maddow. Let her know what's going on. Let her know that she's a military industrial complex shill. I've known this for a long time, but I'm glad other people are uh, getting to kind of know this. So let's look at what your boy Mad Max did. Sorry about that. Let's make sure I share sound. Share sound. Gotta hear it. All right, Max Blumenthal, let's see what he say. What did he say to Rachel Maddow? What's the beef? Rachel, this speech is boring and paranoid. Can you explain why you promoted the Steele dossier? Why did you promote the Steele dossier, which has been proven to be a lie? Why did you promote the lie of no. Russian bounties? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Can you let's ever go. be held accountable for the lies you told let's Americans go. for years let's and go. years and years? Go. You lied to Americans for let's years. Go. Let's go. Silence is You're violence, out. Rachel. You're out. You're out. Let's go. There you go. You want my badge? Thank you. Here you go. I'm walking I'm out. Let's go this way. Which Elevator way? Elevator right here. Yeah. Rachel Maddow refusing to answer questions about the lying about the Steele dossier, lying about yeah, Russian bounties, out. and right doing here. a paranoid speech claiming Nazism is afoot in America. I'm being thrown out by security now. There was no q and A. If there was q and A, I would have politely asked a question. All right, there goes Max B pulling up on um Rachel Maddow, giving her the hard questions. Um, I wish he asked some other questions about like the war. It's, it's Lockheed Martin, you know what I'm saying? Like, ask about the war, bro. Ask about, you know what I mean? Ask about all the money we're giving to the Ukraine. Ask about all the bombing. Well, he did, and, and, and to his credit, in another video where I think he confronted someone else, he did speak about the wars in Yemen and Somalia and um, Pakistan, I believe, or uh, one, one more country. So, so he did. So, you know, good for Max B. Pulled up, pulled up on Rachel Maddow. Now, I don't know why anyone's surprised that Rachel Maddow is at a military industrial complex convention because she's been like a warmonger her whole life, but she's a a warmonger for the Democrats, right? So she's, you know, Democrats are at war. She's definitely supporting Hillary Clinton's war. She's a big Libya cheerleader, which was horrible. Um, so let's look at what she did in Libya. MSNBC's Rachel Maddow lines up behind Obama's attack on Libya. So she was very pro-war when it came to Libya. She did oppose Bush's war in Iraq, but when the Democrats are in power, when it's Bill Clinton... Um, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, she is a cheerleader for their wars. So uh, they say the arguments offered by the MSNBC news host, a principal voice of the American liberal left in the mainstream media. So a principal voice of the liberal left. And, you know, traditionally, the liberal left is supposed to be the anti-war segment of the American population. Not anymore, thanks to Rachel Maddow, are absurd and unworthy but it is unlikely anyone in or around her circle will object. The social layer is fully committed to the Obama administration and moreover the defense of American imperial interests with which it identifies. In the final analysis, its own comfort and peace of mind, this helps explain the collapse of the official anti-war movement in the US since the 2008 election. I think a lot of this had to do with Barack Obama. I think a lot of the anti-war left 
uh, joined, supported Barack Obama, and they thought he was going to be an anti-war president. And they kind of tricked him, or he tricked them into believing that his wars were kind of justified. And this is a, a common Democratic tactic. Like Bill Clinton will uh, run for president on being an anti-Iraq war president, and then he will bomb Bosnia, and he'll bomb Iraq himself. So it's, you know, these Democrats and Republicans that go back and forth, but one thing that stays consistent is the wars. Maddow began her program one day in a typically flippant manner. In the United States of America, we are used to thinking ourselves as a superpower, as a world leader, as a country capable of throwing our weight around when we feel the need to. We go to war all the time. Big wars, little wars, medium-sized wars, weird wars, normal wars. America as a country fights a lot of wars, which is true. But she's segmenting you into in, but not this war, because this war with Obama is going to be wonderful. And we're going to save the Libyan people. And Libya is going to be a wonderful utopia after we bomb them. There's not going to be any slavery or continuous civil wars for after 10 years. After the big, bad, nice Obama bombs Libya, he's going to turn it into a woke utopia where gay people who are free and everybody and, and women well women did have rights in libya which is interesting because rachel maddow has been uh you know a, a feminist voice in the media and in her <laughs> ramping up obama's you know charge for war what she actually did is she wound up turning libya into a place where women have no rights Gaddafi actually gave women a lot of rights women had a lot of rights poor people had a lot of rights under Gaddafi, and uh, black Africans had a lot of rights under Gaddafi. After Rachel Maddow and Obama's war, you have black Africans who are enslaved. You're going back to a type of Sharia law where women don't have rights. You know what I'm saying? Because the Islamic extremists who Obama and Hillary Clinton funded and who Rachel Maddow supported took over the country and took away all the rights that Gaddafi had given them. Maddow's cynical tone hints at criticism, hints and a vaguely anti-establishment, even anti-war stance, while actually committing her to no position or analysis whatsoever. Why does the US government go to war so frequently? What has been the character of those wars? What is their attitude towards those conflicts? About that, nothing. Maddow noted that Obama made his public statement about the latest milits US military action while in Brazil. She continued, President Obama announced his own military invention, but he pointedly declined the opportunity to do it in a way that the U.S. presidents usually do. The current administration's decision, the news program host explained, to forego the chest-thumping commander-in-chief that goes with military intervention in any kind is kind of fascinating and a rather blunt demonstration of just how much this presidency is not like that of George W. Bush. So Obama bombs people and he's quiet about it, right? And George Bush bombs people and he talks trash. So that's a, a real big difference. And Obama is, is so great. From there, Maddow presented clips of past presidents while running for office, posturing as humble peace can candidates. She went on, a candidate named Barack Obama promised that. The difference with Mr. Obama as president is that he appears to be walking more of the walk as well as talking that talk. He's going to war. He ran, he, he, he ran as an anti-war president. He got a Nobel Prize. And then he had horrible wars in Libya, Syria, Yemen, drone strikes in Somalia. I... All right, let's finish with the with the, this article, I should say. But Obama has launched a military assault against virtually defenseless country and, of course, escalated the war in Afghanistan, which he said he would end to unprecedented on levels while maintaining 50,000 U.S. troops in Iraq, which he said he, it would end. How is that different from Bush? It isn't. It's just that you have the, the liberals are now supporting Obama in his war. And before you had the conservatives supporting Bush in his war, but it's two sides of the same coin. All right, now let's look a little bit more at what Rachel Maddow wants to do to Libyan journalists. Rachel Maddow wants to kill Libyan journalists. That's how she feels like the war in Libya should have happened. She thinks they should have been more attacks on Libyan journalists. Like that's what she would change about the war. You know, if, if she could go back and make a few changes, it's not that she wouldn't invade. She would just make sure to take out the journalists first. So MSNBC's Rachel Maddow had a discussion last week about the U.S. role in Libya war with Colonel Jack Jacobs, an MSNBC military consultant. Jacobs describes the U.S. military's ability to jam communications that take place between units of Gaddafi's army 
then referred to the U.S. ability to jam electronic transmissions that occurs when Gaddafi's army forces, blah, 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 ground plane. Blah, blah, blah. After responding to this, wow, Rachel Maddow asked, one of the things that people have questioned is the U.S. has high levels of electronic capability. Why is Libyan State TV on the air? Why is that not one thing they want to shut down? So she wants to shut down the media in, in, in Libya so the people can't know what's going on. She wants to have, what she really means is she wants uh, America, as they've done before, to bomb media organizations and kill reporters who are civilians so they can't report the injustices that America is doing. So this is Mrs. Left Wing, Rachel Maddow. Supporting the horrible, disastrous war in Libya, and if you know, if you paid attention to how it wound it up, it wound it up very horribly. And people like Hillary Clinton, Rachel Maddow, Barack Obama, Samantha Power, a, a number of these Obama administration officials and their uh, their cheerleaders for MSNBC and CNN are directly responsible for this war. I don't know if you should give war crimes, maybe. Let's go see. So Maddow wonder. Okay, that's the same thing. So who is Rachel Maddow's mentor? Like, it has to be like Gloria Steinem. It has to be a feminist icon, maybe a left-wing icon, Noam Chomsky. No, her mentor is Roger Ailes. Do you guys know who Roger Ailes is? I hope we have some left-wing people who are watching my show because I think you might have a different view of Rachel Maddow. After you know that one of her closest friends and mentors and mentors who, ta who taught her about the news game is Roger Ailes, who is widely known as a racist, homophobic, sexist, xenophobic, pro-war. I guess that's the word they do agree on. They're both pro-war. They both like it when their political party is in power and they bomb other countries. So if they do have a friendship that's based on anything, it can't be about gay rights because Roger Ailes is not only homophobic, but he uh, pushed an extremely homophobic agenda while he was at Fox News. It can't be women's rights. It can't be women's rights. Have you seen the movie Bombshell with uh, Nicole Kidman, um, Margot, whatever, whatever her name is, and um, Charlize Theron? All the, all the blonde, pretty blonde actresses were playing the pretty blonde reporters in this movie. And the villain in this movie was Roger Ailes, who was a horrible, sexist, sexual harasser. And if you want to get a sense of who he is politically, there's also a good documentary on Roger Ailes. Um, this documentary is called Divide and Conquer. And if you really want to get a sense of who, where Roger Ailes comes from, like he got his start being the Bush president's campaign manager. And he pushed along the Willie Horton ad and pushed a lot of other racist ads trying to demonize Dukakis and uh, make it seem like he was letting out black rapists and at the same time demonizing black men. So he ran off a campaign of demonizing black men to get his big buddy, Bush Sr., former CIA director in office. Um, so what are their common grounds? Again, military industrial complex. Rachel Maddow is supporting Bush's wars. Uh, no, opposing Bush's wars, but then she's promoting Obama's wars and now Biden's wars and Hillary Clinton's wars, whoever. So let's look at their friendship. Why are they friends? Rachel Maddow had been on the air for seven months when Vanity Fair published a Q&A with cable news' newest darling, in April 2009, who is a reporter other than your own that you cannot help but admire? That's the problem, GW said. I do not watch television. I have never watched a primetime show on CNN or Fox. Shade. Okay. Eight years later in another Q&A, Maddow says she would share a meal. Share a meal. That's stuff, you know, I only share meals with my closest friends. You know, we get up together for dinner. It's not something I do with my randos. Don't, don't go have dinner with my randos. Don't know about... uh. Rachel Maddow, <laughs> the former Fox News chairman who resigned last summer and made accusations of sexual harassment. So again, this guy is like worse than Weinstein. He's almost Epstein level in terms of his sexual harassment. I'm sure if he would have lived a little longer, he would have went to jail. And as much as a champion as Rachel Maddow was for the Me Too movement, she had no smoke for Roger Ailes, no smoke for her friend. No smoke for your friend. Why is this guy your friend? You don't agree with him politically. You don't, he seems obviously like a dirt bag, you know, like a, 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 a sexist, racist dirt bag. Doesn't seem to have any redeeming qualities, but I guess you admire his strategy for Fox News. And strategies for Fox News is propaganda, division, and fear. And you can say Rachel Maddow has become like the new McCarthyism, and she has 
kind of flipped the Fox News on its angles with, you know, instead of worried about immigrants, it's worried about Russia. And for those of you who feel about the, the vaccine and stuff, you know, she's definitely getting a lot of money to promote that and wars. She's big on the Ukraine, big on the Ukraine war, as is MSNBC. I tried to reach him around Christmas time, Maddow said in an interview published Thursday. I just tried to reach you out to reconnect and was not able to get in touch. But Roger, if you're reading this and you want to have a conversation, I'll buy you breakfast. She's buying breakfast for the architect of Fox News, racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic strategy, divide and conquer. So these people sit together. Mind you, if, if you watch Fox News and your sister or brother watches MSNBC, I bet you when you're at a dinner table, you guys are going to be arguing and fighting. Because that's how they divide and conquer people. They have one half on Fox News who believes something, and then one half on the MSNBC. And MSNBC believes all Fox News viewers are racist, uh, low-class white people. And then all of Fox News people think that MSNBC viewers are all white elitist or people of color and who you know, blindly support Obama or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or whoever. Yeah, that's right. MSNBC's liberal icon wants to reconnect with the former king of conservative media. The proud feminist wants to pick up the tab for bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. I'd expect her to be vegan. I'm a little disappointed. With the guy who allegedly tried to pressure female journalists in bed. So this is, he's basically Harvey Weinstein of the news business, NBC Harvey Weinstein. So I can't imagine like a female director right now saying, I want to go meet with Harvey Weinstein for lunch. You know, obviously before when he was <laughs> empowering people with eyes with his tattered image, she's still his friend. So say what you want about Rachel Maddow, but she stands by her friends like uh, Roger Ailes. Of course, the re and reconnect means that Maddow and Ailes have connected before. It turns out that in the years since Maddow said she couldn't name anyone at a rival network whom she admired, Maddow and Ailes have developed an unlikely mutual admiration. It's not unlikely to me. They both play for the same government, military, industrial, complex, divide and conquer game. That's, you know, none of them have a real agenda at all. I don't think Rachel Maddow really cares about the rights of women about the rights of uh, the LBGTQ community, because if she did, she would know that there were uh, LGBTQ people in Libya and Syria and these places she encourages uh, Obama to bomb. And that she would know that when you take out someone like Gaddafi, which you encouraged, which you encouraged, that Islamic extremists would take over and take women's rights away. So I do not think that Rachel Maddow is pro-gay or pro-feminist. I think she might be pro-gay, rich, white, industrial, military, industrial complex women. She might be pro-gay uh, if you're rich and in the military. But if you're poor, and especially in a third world country, she is not pro-gay at all. She's not pro-human at all. She is a propagandist for the American war machine when it shifts to the left. So when you know we have Joe Biden or Obama, that's when they have their wars, that's who they go to to push their agenda because people think that Rachel Maddow is some sort of progressive. Even though her mentor, buddy, who she hangs out of time is Roger Ailes, one of the worst right-wing forces in American media. And that's just a fact. Most remarkably, the whole thing started when Ailes developed a pickup line. Okay, pickup line. Um, I'm not going to say anything about Mad out sexuality. Obviously, she's a lesbian, so this is a, a play. So I don't think he's actually trying to pick her up. You're good. You're not good yet, but you have talent. I don't believe this is how they met. I think they met this before. I don't think she just came up and said, yeah, I'm going to help you. No, no way. They, they had to have some other connections. Uh, most interesting scene at White House reception. Roger, Rachel Maddow engrossed in a deep conversation with Roger Ailes. Her mentor is Roger Ailes. Much to her own surprise, Maddow said she found Ailes to be charming and friendly. I guess um, if you were to say like Bill Cosby was charming and friendly, which I'm sure he is, right? Sure, like he didn't get the butt, but he's also a rapist, right? So I, I don't know. One thing might negate it, the other. You don't hear too many people talking kindly about uh, Bill Cosby, Jeffrey Epstein, or Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein made a lot of good movies. Jeffrey Epstein gave a lot of money to charity. You know, I'm sure a lot of people talked about, you know, what a charming, nice fellow Jeffrey Epstein was. Just like charming, friendly guy, just like your buddy Roger Ailes. The next day, the Huffington Post ran a picture of the encounter and Maddow sent Ailes a note. 
I, I didn't want him to think that I agreed with the Huffington Post implication that this was a scandal. I think it's a scandal. It's a scandal because it shows you that the left and the right who put people against each other, right, constantly divide the, the, the country. You got to see all sorts of fights between Democrats and Republicans at, you know, at, at protests, at dinner tables. So this is a scandal. <laughs> it's a scandal. Like, come on, man. Like, it's it, 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 it's a big hoax. And, and if you're on the left and you like MSNBC or if you're on the right and you watch Fox News, you're getting fooled by both of these people. In 2012, when Maddow released a book, so she released a book about like American war power called Drift. Ailes wrote the recommendation. So as pro-war conservatives Roger Ailes is, he's writing a recommendation for supposedly anti-war. I mean, maybe she was anti-war when this book came out, but after Olivia, she can't she can't claim that anymore. Uh, Drift never makes the case that war might be necessary. America would be weakened dramatically if we had underreacted under to 9-11. However, Rachel Maddow makes valid arguments that our country has been drifting towards questionable wars, draining our resources without sufficient input and time. People who like Rachel will love the book. People who don't will get angry. But an aggressive debate is good for ang uh, America. Drift is a good book worth reading. So I think Rachel Maddow is setting herself up to be a pro-war propagandist by opposing some wars, right? So this is what Obama kind of did. Like when Obama uh, opposed the Iraq war, it made it seem like he was a responsible person, even though he never really had to vote for it or speak out against it. But he he said he opposed it, so whatever. Um, but it made it seem like he was a rational anti-war pe uh, president. So then when Obama goes to, to be president now, he starts bombing countries. It's like, well, he's anti-war. So if he's bombing a country, he really must need to. No, he doesn't need to at all. But that's that's what they want you to think. In 2014, a Q&A from The Hollywood Reporter asked Ailes the same question Vanity Fair had posed to Maddow five years earlier. Among your competitors, is there any talent you particularly admire? I think Rachel Maddow has been a surprise to a lot of people, Ailes answered. She wouldn't really work at this network because she wouldn't even come in the door. But on a personal level, I like her. I don't want to hurt her career, so I won't say we get along. So obviously they do get along. <laughs> but I've had dialogue with her and she's very smart. She has adapted well to the television medium. A few weeks later, Ailes said this to the New Yorker, Rachel is good. He loves her. Roger Ailes, you know, hates black people, hates women, hates most other gay people, but Likes Rachel Maddow. Rachel is good, and she will get even better when she discovers that there are people on Earth who don't share every one of her beliefs. Okay. About a month after that, media I reported that Maddow and Ailes have been spotted together at the Carlisle, a very expensive restaurant, <laughs> an establishment with a delicious-looking, if overpriced, breakfast menu. So, again, I only get up with my closest friends for meals. It's not anything you just do with someone at another network or whatever, but she's hanging out with this guy regularly. They're making it, she knows that they're close. And what are they close about? They both are playing the same game. Ne divide and conquer, go to war. Make Republicans hate Democrats, go to war. Make Democrats hate Republicans, go to war. That's, that's the playbook. Divide, conquer, and you don't talk about the war too much, but when you do, you make it seem like it's necessary. It's the game. Fox is a good place to work for journalists. So again, all this MSNBC versus Fox beef, not among the journalists. And part of the way they're able to attract talent, you know, real journalistic talent, like the uh, blonde, attractive bombshells, who, I'm not saying they're not talented, but okay. Especially on the straight news side, gotta go on the straight news side because she doesn't want to talk about opinion. It's because they're willing to stand up for their reporters, just like any real press news organization will. During last year's Republican National Convention, as news broke out that Ailes was on the verge of being pushed out of Fox News, Maddow offered this perspective. If you know anything about the intersection of media and politics in this country, you'll know that this is a seismic event. Okay. In terms of the Republican Party, the conservative movement, and the swath of American media that leans towards the Republican side of the ledger. Roger Ailes essentially started Fox News 20 years ago within Fox. Within five years of starting it, it was the number one cable news network in America and has maintained that grip 
all of these years. It's almost impossible to imagine the Republican modern party without Roger Ailes' Fox News. So Rachel Maddow, when he died, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I know a lot of people are, you're not supposed to speak ill of the dead, but I know when a lot of people die, like Bin Laden or people celebrate, not Maddow, she did not celebrate. Now, nor should you, nor should you celebrate the death of anyone, even if they're a rival. But she laments his passing, laments him, much like Joe Biden eulogized Strom Thurmond, <laughs> the racist Strom Thurmond. Maddow is offering her own eulogy to Roger Ailes, even after the whole sexual harassment scandal, the bombshell movie, the divide and conquer documentary, all of which showed what a completely horrible human being this guy was, not only politically, but personally. So I don't know what she had to like about him. I can't figure it out. Um, all right, but let's let's try and figure it out. MSNBC's Rachel Maddow spoke to Access Hollywood about the death of Roger Ailes, where she said it was a shock for her because she considered the former Fox News chairman as a friend and mentor to her. Speaking to Natalie M Morales and Kit Hoover, Maddow said that she had a collegial friendship with Ailes, collegial friendship, ever since she asked him to review her performances on TV. Why would you do that? Why would you be a left-wing reporter, go to your enemy on the right wing and say, hey, why don't you review? There's a, not only are they competitors uh, in terms of ratings, but also ideologically competitors. All right. With Ailes ever since she asked him to review her performances on TV, Mata acknowledged that Ailes' sexual harassment scandals were a huge deal, but, but, this is a big but, she went on to say that it was undeniable that Ailes had a major impact on the cable news business before he was fired from his network. So, if, like, they asked Eddie Murphy about Bill Cosby, and he was like, yeah, he he, he might have raped some woman, but the Cosby show was hilarious, great show, he changed TV, but Jeffrey Epstein was convicted of, you know, sexually assaulting women and was probably going to be convicted more, but he gave a lot to charity. He gave a lot of money to charity, that Jeffrey Epstein. He gave money to Harvard. Gave money to Harvard, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell gave money to the oceans. So, you know, let's negate all the horrible things they did. Harvey Weinstein, Shakespeare in Love. There's a, a lot of good Miramax movies. Like, he was an executive producer for a lot of good movies in the 90s, early 2000s. But I think his legacy is now more of being a jerk and a uh, a-hole. And it's hard to say anything nice about him, you know. Even if even his good Miramax movies. And I don't think anyone right now would want to admit to being a friend. I think they would say, yeah, well, I was friends with him. I didn't know he was a jerk. I haven't spoke to him since I heard the allegations. I don't condone that behavior. I don't associate with people like that. One would think that Rachel Maddow would say the same thing about Roger Ailes, but no. The reason he left is dire stuff, Maddow said. But this corner of the news business, I, I got a lot of buts. But, yeah, he did some bad stuff. But... He also was a racist and a homophobe and got America to invade Iraq. He also, you know, got Bush elected in question. Months. So he done, he did some other things besides sexually harass women. He was also a, a racist, a sexist, a homophobe. So he, you can't just judge him by his sexual harassment. We also need to judge him by his sexism and racism that he promoted on the news. And right, Rachel, and then you agree with him on those things. I Maybe not, but you definitely agree with him on wars. You guys love wars, both of you guys. I think it's worth noting, really was created by Ailes. All of us in cable news had something to do with him because he was formative. Really, why? Why would you have to have something to do with this Roger Ailes guys? Maddow went on to talk about several interactions she had with Ailes throughout her life, several, particularly those where she thought his advice about how to improve her on-air presence, divide and conquer, be blindly loyal to... to one political party and bash the other party while promoting wars. That is how you become successful on news. It works for Fox. It works for MSNBCs. You bash the other party and their demographic and their politicians and their news sources while you tout your own. And when your party goes to war, you got to be full on cheerleader. And if their party is going to war, you might be a cheerleader too. Because, you know, wars, wars bring people together. So here's what she says. I don't want to dismiss any of the serious allegations that were made against Ailes that resulted in him being fired from his job, but 
But there were she's a lot of butts here. There's a lot of butts, Rachel Maddow. You don't need to say any butts. You just be like, he was a jerk. Leave it alone. And But you keep on saying, but what were the other things to know about him too? What? He was professional and supportive and interesting. How was he supportive? How was he interesting? Was his racism interesting? Was his warmongering interesting? Was his, what was interesting about this man, Rachel? Um, and I could guess he was supportive or professional of you. I mean, you guys, MSNBC needs Fox. It's like two sides of the coin, you know? They, they need to bash each other and fight each other to coexist. So... Let's look into your boy, Max B. Max Blumenthal. What's going on with Max B? <laughs> so I actually did an article about Max B a long time ago for who, what, why. It's not Max B. I did an article about his dad, Sydney B. I'm about to pull it up. Now, let's take a look at this article. Now, here is why I am concerned about Max B. Like, he did great. He's doing great. He's confronting Rachel Maddow. But in the immortal words of the New York Yankees fans, when they were trying to chant against Pedro Martinez, who's your daddy? Now, I'm not a person who thinks that the sins of father are the sins of the son. Um a lot of people like Luke Skywalker go against their father. Now, you know, they go against their father's will and they become rebels, right? They become part of the rebellion. So one could say, maybe, maybe Sidney Blumenthal is part of the empire, right? He's a Hillary Clinton aide. He's we're gonna get into him being a bit of a war profiteer. Um, but Max Blumenthal is fighting against his father. He's Fighting against, like, it, it seems if it seems he is, right? He's fighting against uh, the the wars, and uh, Sidney Blumenthal was profiting from the wars, right? But I am a little suspicious of Max because his daddy loves him still. Like, you would think if you were, like, a rabble-rousing leftist journalist and, you're a, a, and your dad was a centrist war profiteer, he'd be like, oh, my son, what a jerk. He keeps on taking down the deep state and messing with wars, and I need these wars for my bank. But... Sidney Blumenthal still loves his son, Max. So I think it would be an interesting discussion at the dinner table because, again, like we've seen now, like the division between left and right, right, which is manufactured. But now we're seeing a division also, which I, I kind of agree with, between like the identity politics left, which is MSNBC, but they're, they're still pro-war, but they're pro-gay, pro-Black Lives Matter, uh, pro-Me Too. But they're also pro sending billions upon billions of weapons to the Ukraine. They're all, you know, they're all for uh, the CIA doing whatever they want. They don't question the CIA. So it's an interesting dynamic we have here. And what side is Max B on? Is he on the anti-CIA, anti-war side, or is he on his dad's side? His dad's side is definitely on the pro-CIA, pro-deep state, pro-American wars. So Sidney Blumenthal is a really interesting character. This is Max B's dad. So Blumenthal got to start uh, in politics campaigning for John F. Kennedy, 1960. He went to Brandeis University, which is a Jewish college uh, out right outside of Boston, traditionally Jewish college. And he joined the, the anti-Vietnam War group, SDS. SDS were connected to the weatherman. So really anti-war. And then Blumenthal wrote a really good book about the assassination of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King called, I think it was Government by Gunplay. And like Peter Dale Scott wrote in a lot of, a lot of great progressive, like anti-CIA. Now I hate to, I, I like to use the term uh, deep po politics scholar. I really hate the term conspiracy theorist because if you look at the scholars who researched the JFK assassination, they have so much more journalistic integrity. They do so much more sourcing than take notes than mainstream journalists. So it, it's really ridiculous for me that mainstream journalists who kind of spew propaganda, a lot of them just read from a teleprompter. They don't do any fact checking themselves. Uh, ridicule people actually do research on things like the JFK assassination, MLK assassination as conspiracy theorists. But th to say that, Sidney Blumenthal was very much in the JFK, uh, was killed by the CIA camp, was very much in the Martin Luther King, was killed by the FBI camp. And this was years before. This was like in the, the late 80s, the early 80s, late 70s. So, but in 2003, he wrote another book, and this was horrible because he wrote a book basically trying to uh, debunk, which is a, the, the world's the, the Clinton conspiracy, which he didn't. And, you know, a lot of this came from Arkansas, where there are allegations that Bill Clinton was involved in the CIA 
Contra cocaine drug tarcade at Amina with Barry Seal. A lot of credible allegations against Bill Clinton coming from people like Terry Reed, Chip Tatum, LD Brown, so many allegations of Bill Clinton being involved in the, in the drug trade. So the one pro conspiracy who realized, I think they, when I say pro conspiracy is that you kind of realize that politicians can be evil and can deal drugs and assassinate people too. That's that's that will put you in the conspiracy camp. And if you don't believe that, if you believe that politicians will never kill people, never hurt people, never lie, never deal drugs, then you're not a conspiracy theorist. But if you believe that those things are possible, then you are. So he he totally changes. Like he started working for the Washington Post, which is known to spread uh, CIA propaganda, becomes like a mainstream journalist, becomes a big Clinton supporter. So before he was a Clinton supporter, like on paper, he was a Clinton cheerleader and writing for various outlets talking about how great the Clintons were. So although Blumenthal was denied a spot on Clinton's staff after President Obama named his Secretary of State, he continued to serve the Clintons in other capacities, being a part of the Clinton Secret Spy Network. So Max B's dad was the head of the Clinton Secret Spy Network. So like even, even more secret than the CIA. He was paid $120,000 a year, which is a lot of money, by the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton's international charity, and I use the word charity very loosely, it doesn't really work as a charity is supposed to work in which, you know, people give money to the charity and then the charity gives the money to poor people or the arts or, you know, some service that might need money. But that's not how the Clinton Foundation works. It's rich people give money to the Clinton Foundation. The Clintons keep the money for themselves and, or, or amongst their friends, and then they give political favors to whoever donated the money to the Clinton Foundation. So this is real interesting about David Brock. And this is a, David Brock was a big time Clinton hater and he was in Arkansas. And he was actually one of the few journalists who was reporting on Bill Clinton's white water shady ties to like the drug trade. Something happened to David Brock. He went from like the biggest Clinton critic in the world to the biggest Clinton supporter in the world. Uh, and it turns out it's Sidney Blumenthal who recruited Brock to join the Clinton team in the 90s. What did Sidney Blumenthal do to recruit David Brock to turn their biggest enemy into their biggest supporter? I don't know. It's probably another episode. Still, Blumenthal's relationship with Hillary Clinton while she was Secretary of State had little to do with charitable giving or the media as his work with the Clinton Foundation and Media Matters might suggest. Instead, it seems that Blumenthal took on a new role with the Clintons as a kind of foreign policy advisor, or as ProPublica characterize it as the head of a secret spy network for Hillary Clinton. This is Max B's dad. What qualifications did Blumenthal have to be a foreign policy advisor? Rep. Trey Gowdy, the chairman of the House Select Committee on Benghazi, asked Clinton that question. We have a CIA, so why would you not rely on the government's own vetted uh, sourced intelligence agency? He probably doesn't trust the CIA like I don't. I, I, I don't know. The CIA is horrible, but there's also privatized intelligence. There's a lot of money in privatized intelligence. So it's not that Hillary Clinton doesn't want to work with the CIA. It's that she knows if she works with Cindy Blumenthal, he can get outside money and she can help out her friend. And she trusts him more than she trusts people in the CIA. But Blumenthal had yet another reason to offer advice. He reportedly had financial ties to a military contractor that would profit from U.S. engagement in Libya. So he's a war profiteer. He's giving Hillary Clinton this advice to go to war in Libya. Meanwhile, when she does go to war in Libya, his financial ties to military contractors was on him becoming a very rich man. Blumenthal has disguised himself only as an honest broker trying to bring Libyans together. Great job, City Blumenthal. You really brought those Libyans together through that war that brought back slavery and is still going on 10 years after and where women have no rights and people are getting killed left and right. Thank you. You really brought those Libyans together, uh, Sidney B. Uh, specifically, Blumenthal might have been through, through a finder's fee. If a company called Osprey Global S Solutions got a contract in Libya, Osprey, which provided security, Weapons, training, and intelligence for countries and companies was trying to line up contracts from the new Libyan government and the U.S. So here is Sydney B, right? <laughs> Sydney B is profiting off the wars through his connection to Hillary Clinton, and he's advocating 
He's advocating. If you read his emails, like WikiLeaks is back up. You can get all the Hillary Clinton, uh, Sidney Blumenthal emails. And you will see your boy Sidney B trying to get Hillary to go to war. He wants her to go to war. He wants her to invade Libya. And lobbying Hillary Clinton to get the U.S. involved in the war in Libya. Blumenthal was also, in effect, lobbying for Osprey to profit from the war. So he is a war profiteer, just like those people Max B was uh, protesting at Trucorn. In July of 2011, Blumenthal sent Clinton an email titled TNC, referring to the opposition government in Libya that opposed longtime Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. In the email, Blumenthal let Hillary know about Osprey. You should be aware that there is a good chance at the contact meeting in Turkey, the TNC ambassador to the UAE, a man you have not met, whose name is Dr. Nada, may tell you the TNC has reached an agreement with a U.S. company. The company is a new one, Osprey, headed by Former General David Grange, former head of Delta Force, Osprey will provide field medical help, military training, organized supplies, and logistics to the TNC. So he's already gaining the, the once these horrible rebel leaders, like you find about these rebel leaders, they were all like religious extremists. He's already gearing up to provide them with support once they kill Gaddafi and take over the country. So horrible. The TNC, horrible, horrible. Uh, Grange can train their force and has drawn up a plan for taking Tripoli, the capital of Libya, similar to the plan he helped develop that was used by the first wave of special forces in the capture of Benghazi. So here we have Sidney B mixing with ex-military people who are doing privatized military contracts. These guys are mercenaries for money. And if anyone is profiting off of war, it's these guys and Sidney B. This is a private contract. It does not involve NATO. It puts Americans in a central role without being direct battle combatants. Okay. The TNC wants to demonstrate that they are pro US. They see this as a significant way to do that. So he's negotiating with these, these Libyan rebels who uh, are extremists, terrorists, future ISIS members, to provide them with training. Like, so he wants to train these crazy uh, terrorists who want to kill Gaddafi. Uh, the TNC's leader, whose leaders have given to flights of fancy that Gaddafi will fall tomorrow or the day after, have come to the conclusion that they must organize their forces and that they must score a military victory of their own over Gaddafi that is not dependent solely on NATO in order to give the legitimacy sold. He's, it looks like Sidney B is giving war advice to, uh, he's being a little mini Kissinger to, to Hillary Clinton and profiting off his war advice, which is highly unethical, possibly criminal. One day after Blumenthal sent the email, Hillary Clinton recognized the TNC as a legitimate government of Libya and pledged 30 billion of Libyan assets seized by the American government to the Libyan rebels. So they stole the money from Gaddafi and now they're giving it to these crazy right-wing extremist rebels who like sodomized Gaddafi and uh, started uh, enslaving black people like as soon as they got in power. So these, these, these are the people Blumenthal is supporting. In March 2011, 11 days into the NATO bombing of Libya, Blumenthal sent an email to Hillary Clinton entitled, Win the War. In the email, he enlisted the motivating factors for a U.S. interest in overthrowing Gaddafi. So, Blumenthal's all in, man. He's all in on this war, bro. Like, Max B, confront him, bro. Like, next time you have dinner, right, just have a little camera on him and be like, yo, dad, what's up with all these wars you started in Libya, man? You got all these money to start wars? That's whack. Do that, Max. Come on, man. You, I, I know he's your dad, but you, 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 if you're really a rebel, if you're really a Jedi and you're fighting the Empire... You got to go after uh, Darth Vader. So you, you got to confront him and put it on the internet like you did the battle, man. I want to see it, man. Come on, Max. All right. The positive case for national interest in terms of removing Gaddafi, establishing stability in North Africa, which it did not do. It added massive instability. That war just spilled over to everywhere, spilled over to Syria. ISIS spread. Yeah, great job. Se security, democracy in Egypt, economic development, 
effect throughout Arab, the Arab world and Africa, extending U.S. influence. Now, that's the only thing here that really worked. Counterbalancing Iran, maybe. The humanitarian motive offered is limited. So while they were selling this war as a humanitarian war, Sidney B knows, he knows it's not a humanitarian war at all. Like they're the, the rebels they were supporting, they were the ones using the chemical weapons, not, not Gaddafi. You know what I mean? Uh, they were claiming, Susan Rice said that Gaddafi was giving Viagra to his soldiers to, to rape like Libyan civilians. This was proven totally false. This was something spread by MSNBC, Rachel Maddow and those people. Totally false. And it turned out it was actually the U.S. supported uh, extremist terrorists who were doing the raping. So... Yeah. Blumenthal ended the email, read the poll, win the war, no way out. So he's telling her, go to war, go to war, go to war, and went on to stress how important defeating Gaddafi could be to Obama's 2012 uh, re-election. So he's saying you got to go to war to get Obama re-elected because the American people love war. And he's not really disclosing the fact that you got to go to war and I'll make all this money off Osprey. I'll make all this money off my military contracts and connections. They were warned. <laughs> to be fair, in other emails in February and March 11th, Blumenthal let Clinton know some of the risks of intervention. Both Blumenthal and Clinton received information that pointed to the chance that outside information might tip Libya into the chaotic and violent state that in, in fact became after the fall of Gaddafi. So this is an email from Sidney B to Hillary C. Islamist activity. Libya's Islamist activists have maintained a low profile since the start of the insurgency in late February, fearing that their activities would give credence to Gaddafi's claims that the rebels are terrorists. Okay. As the LNC is taking shape, they are now working to make their voice heard and, in and influence events within the LNC. Ali Salabi, Salem al Shiki and Mohammed al Gerto, leading Islamic figures who had taken refuge in London and are close to the Muslim Brotherhood, okay, drafted a national pact which looks like a roadmap for organizing the role of the Islamic movement in the transition to oppose Gaddafi Libya. So, the Islamic movement in Libya has been horrible, as I say, the sub Saharan um, dark skinned Africans are being sold as slaves, beaten, and tortured. Women no longer have rights. It's a it's like a massive civil war in Libya. You don't hear about it in the news. You don't hear about it in the news, but don't go to Libya. Or if you do Google Libya, you'll you'll I guarantee you won't be positive news. There'll be more news on more war. Because it's been wars for 10 years, 12 years since uh, Obama's intervention at the behest of Cindy Blumenthal and Hillary Clinton. Traditionally, the eastern part of Libya has been a stronghold for radical Islamist groups, including the Al-Qaeda-linked Libyan. Islamic fighting group. Later becomes ISIS. While Qaddafi's regime has been successful in suppressing the jihadist threat in Libya. So, okay. The current situation opens the door for a jihadist resurgence. So they knew. They knew. They knew. They knew that in invading uh, Libya, bombing Libya, killing Qaddafi, that they would open up a hornet's nest of Islamic extremists and terrorists, and that's what they did. That's kind of held to the start of ISIS, who moved on to Syria and Iraq, thanks to Sidney B. Egypt has a growing interest in keeping a close eye on jihadist movements in eastern Libya. This is especially true for the Egyptian military as the Egyptian military is already concerned about the Islamic militancy overflow from Gaza after their forces were pulled back to Cairo during the uprising against Mubarak. It is also clear that Blumenthal and Clinton had, inform had information that the rebels they supported were dangerous and a threat to Black Africans in Libya. In an email from February of 2011, Blumenthal wrote, at the same time, a number of these foreign troops have fallen into the hands of demonstrators and been killed with their bodies set out for public view. There have also been instances where Africans not involved in the fighting have been attacked and killed by the demonstrators. So these racist Islamic extremists 
they were actually Gaddafi, um, because there were so many like um mercenaries and NATO and all these other forces, Gaddafi had to rely on mercenaries, uh sub-Saharan dark-skinned African mercenaries. And they would torture these guys. And not only did they did that to them, but they would find any black people and torture them and kill these people. And then they started selling them into slavery. So these are the people that Sidney B and Hillary C put into power in Libya. And that's what happens. In emails to Clinton, the one-time anti-Vietnam war activist and critic of the CIA consistently took a hawkish position. Before the U.S. began pushing the U.N. to sanction a no-fly zone in Libya, Blumenthal advised Clinton to back such a proposal. And Blumenthal pushed Clinton to arm the rebels, even advising her to provide them with armor-piercing bullets. So he's pretty hands-on here, man. He's pretty hands-on in terms of this war business. In the end, the West intervention in Libya left the country in a humanitarian crisis and destabilized North Africa with multiple militias and jihadists spilling over from Libya to neighboring countries like Tunisia. So this is ISIS. This is ISIS going to Tunisia, going to Syria, going to Iraq, thanks to Sydney B, Hillary C, Obama, oh, Barrio, you know what I'm saying? Osprey never received the contract and actually lost money pursuing them. So all that work and poor old Sydney B couldn't even get any money out of it and destroyed the whole country and you didn't even make any cash. But in the first flush of victory, Blumenthal rushed to congratulate Clinton and urged her to take credit for the Libyan war. He urged her, urged her, which Obama later called the worst mistake of his presidency. Uh, maybe. Uh, in August 2011, a month before Gaddafi was killed, Blumenthal sent the Secretary of State an email that contained the following paragraphs. First, brava. Not bravo, brava. He's, you know, look at the pronouns. This is a historic moment for you, and you will be credited for realizing it. No, it's not. When Gaddafi himself is finally removed, you should, of course, make a public statement before the cameras, wherever you are, even if the driveway of your vacation house, you must go on camera. This is the most horrible advice anyone could give. Uh, you must establish yourself an historical record at this moment. No, Sydney B, why? Why are you encouraging this poor woman, man? This poor woman to go to war and take credit for the war. Oh, no. Do not skimp on the reasons in the US interest behind the successful strategy. We prevented a human tragedy on a vast scale. Gaddafi, who had already killed 2,000 people in April, threatened to massacre the residents of Benghazi, tens if not hundreds, this is all BS, of people. We have supported the legitimate aspirations of the Islamic people. You have supported Islamic extremists, racist, sexist, homophobic people. You supported ISIS for democracy and freedom. We have ousted a murderous dictator who actually provided rights to women, housing to uh, residents, uh, income to residents. You know, it was a lot better under Gaddafi than under what you did, Cindy B. <laughs> Who's been a source for terrorism? No, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda gets their support from the CIA, not, not Gaddafi. Um, civil war throughout Africa and a prop for dictators everywhere. By acting in Libya, we have helped advance the cause of democracy and freedom, freedom throughout the Arab world. We have provided an important support for neighboring Egypt. We have put Assad on notice that the sands of time have run out for him as well. Our successful strategy in Libya stands as a warning that our strategy can work again. So he's basically saying any country we will come take out your leader and put in a Islamic extremist, racist, sexist, homophobic government. That's what Sidney B is saying. This is a very big moment historically and for you, history will tell your part of it. You are vindicated. No, you're not. If you look at Libya right now, there's no way Sidney B or Hillary C will be vindicated at all. So this is basically what he wanted her to do and he wanted her to say. And this is going to be one of her most infamous quotes. Clinton on Gaddafi. We came. We saw he died. Where's the video? I, I got to watch it on YouTube. It's going to see. They took it off YouTube. They took it off YouTube. 
Sorry about this. We running like this. You know what I mean? Doing it live. We doing it live. Hillary Clinton, Gaddafi, came, saw, died. Oh, let's look at this. This is great. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed. Yes, yes. we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> we came, we saw, he died. Millions of other people died. Millions, thousands of Africans were put into slavery. Women lost their rights. We created a destabilized region in which many more thousands of people would die from war. <laughs> Sickening, 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 Sidney Blumenthal and Hillary Clinton. All right. Now, I know a lot of y'all are probably saying, Casey, sins of the father are not sins of the son. Like, who? we don't even know if Max B and Sidney B, like, they might not even mess with each other. Well, you're a little wrong because Sidney B is a huge Max B fan. Huge, huge Max B fan. Like, he loves him. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's look at some of this. Let's look at some of the WikiLeaks going on up here. Copy. Boom. Paste. So these are, this, this is just like a million emails that you can find from Cindy Blumenthal to Hillary Clinton in which he talks about how great his son's reporting is. Like, he loves his son. Like, I would think that, you know, if you're a pro-war Clinton goon, you might have a problem with your son being an anti-war progressive journalist, but not Sidney B. Not Sidney B. Oh, look, he sends her all sorts of, oh, about the author. He sends her, like, literally, if you could, like, let's just search. Search, you'll see how many articles. Oh, we could, these went down again. That's crazy. I have all of them, so, goddamn. All right, there's like a whole bunch. I really wanted to search it though. This passed from my son in the streets of Cairo. What I found interesting is the wide disparity between Andrew Cuomo's numbers and New York National League. And then, you know, so always talking about how he loves his son, how his son's up, up in the mix doing these great things. So this is, I, I really have to wonder about Max B. Max B. You could Google yourself on WikiLeaks. I don't know why they're not letting it happen anymore. They're not letting search happen? Let me see. They're not letting the search happen, but let's see if I do this. Max Blumenthal. The WikiLeaks was up just like a second ago. All right, here we go. See, look at all these emails. Did I not spell it right? I literally have all this stuff from before. I'm about to end this. All these words, Max Blumenthal. This is crazy. There we go. I must have spelled it wrong. These are all letters, 282 results. And almost 90% of these emails are emails from Cindy Blumenthal to Hillary Clinton. Now, so this is, it gets so crazy. Look at all these. One, two, three. Four, five, six, Streets of Cairo. My son's in the Streets of Cairo. My son's in the Streets of Cairo. My son, Max, uh, BB versus Obama. What Max did July 1st. Max from Israel. Max, BB, like literally so many. In fact, Max Blumenthal, Max Blumenthal, like he's all over this. If you go on WikiLeaks and you search Max Blumenthal, he's all over Hillary Clinton's emails. I don't know. So, all right, I'm going to stop it. You could do it all yourself, like, you know what I mean? If you want to get all the Max Blumenthal, Cindy Blumenthal emails, go to WikiLeaks and search it, but let's stop it. So, I want to know, Max B, what's going on with your pops, bro? What's the relationship? I understand, like, two people could have, you know, different political views in a household, but if your father openly supports war criminals and you openly oppose war criminals, you think there might be some division in the family and you wouldn't think that your dad would be sending your articles to war criminals when you're an anti-war journalist. But that's it. That's it. So now y'all got to learn about the mentors of Rachel Maddow and Max Blumenthal, his dad. And hopefully I will put their little confrontation in a new perspective. And I, I really hope Max B is not like his father. I really, because Sidney B was once a progressive journalist, right? 
He was once an SDS. He wrote about the JFK assassination and then he fell in with the Clinton. So this makes me think that maybe, just maybe, Cindy Blumenthal was a never a progressive journalist. He was infiltrating progressive journalists. And that's why I'm a little worried about Max B. I don't want to cast any aspersions out there. You know what I mean? I, hopefully he'll see this video and answer it and have an explanation about his relationship with his father. And, you know, neither of them are CIA. Who knows? But if you look at the type of stuff that Cindy B was doing, it was a lot of CIA type stuff. So that's it, man. That's the end of Reality Theory episode 12. Thanks for watching. Uh, please share, like, subscribe, like my channel. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Like my videos, share my videos. I got a lot of cool videos for Reality Theory. Check it out. Peace.